Uh, before we get started, I just want to say a couple of things and um, uh, make a couple opening comments and then obviously take any questions that you guys might have. Um, <clears throat> it's, 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 it's kind of startling to think that this is, uh, this is our eighth season uh, that we're beginning. Uh, a lot has been condensed into, uh, you, get, you get the directions you need to go in the right place? Okay, we're here. It should be just right here. You know this place, so you know this place. Um, but uh, eight, eight years allows you to have relationships like that where you can bust some chops with Michael. Um, but uh, eight years together, um, eight years in Oklahoma City, it's, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, condensed into a, a pretty brief amount of time. We feel really fortunate uh, to be starting year eight. Um, and before I start talking about the season ahead, I do want to make sure that uh, I take some time just thanking our entire staff uh, for what has been uh, a tremendous summer. Um, you know, we can't be in the position that we're in without contributions from uh, all departments uh, in both business and basketball operations. And we have a great group of people that work with us. And um, I wish I could name them individually, um, but um, uh, wonderful people, and we're excited about uh, their contributions leading into the year. Uh, I would say that um, coming into the season, extremely excited, uh, incredibly enthusiastic about what's ahead for us. I'm really excited for our players. I'm really excited uh, because they've put in a ton of work, uh, which has become the norm for us uh, over an eight-year period of time. But uh, they've spent a lot of time together. I think that they have continued to um, develop both individually and as a team. And, you know, when you think about it, some of these guys are entering their eighth uh, season playing together, seven seasons playing together. Uh, that's something that's very rare in pro sports today and not something we take for granted. I'm excited for these guys uh, because they've established a lot and have a chance to continue to build on top of that. I'm really excited for our coaches and our coaching staff. Uh, Billy and his group have been incredibly diligent, incredibly detail-oriented, and have been totally invested in uh, designing a system of play that not only um, embraces the intrinsic you know, qualities of our team, but also works to try to evolve them and, and create a, an efficient and um, you know, a precise uh, style of play on both sides of the ball. Uh, one of the things that we'll point out, I mean, I think we covered a lot of the qualities that attracted us to Billy Donovan, and he has been um, uh, excellent in all of those categories. But the thing that I've learned a lot about him this summer is that he has a tremendous passion for helping his players find the best in themselves, uh, both physically, mentally, emotionally. I think he is passionate about helping players uh, achieve things that they can't achieve on their own. Um, and allowing them to understand what goes into their, uh, their collective uh, success and the process that it takes to be not just good but great. And he's really passionate about that, and he's really invested with them. It's been great to watch, and I'm excited for him. Um, I'm excited for us and for the community to have another year together to build our relationship. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You know, we strive to be the people's team and um, the local team that competes nationally. But, um, you know, make no mistake about it, uh, we're an organic uh, local Oklahoma product. Uh, we're proud of the values that uh, we have built upon because they're synonymous with that of the state that we represent. And uh, we're looking forward to continuing the relationship with our fans. We exist because of the people in Oklahoma and Oklahoma uh, communities. Um, Reflecting back on some of the things that uh, we're all appreciative for, um, and I think we're all appreciative to be a part of the organization, but one of the things that makes it great working for the Thunder is that uh, there's an ambition to, to continually build. There's an ambition to uh, continually and relentlessly improve the organization, uh, you know, not just because we have to, but because that's by design, because we want to uh, measure ourselves against our own ideal and um, I think that we've got a great group of people that are, are focused on building the best organization that we can and making it something that can stand the test of time. Um, with all of the excitement that we have going into the year and also, you know, with the overall health of the organization, it still comes back to what we talked about when, we, when our boots hit the ground in 2008, which is um, adopting an everyday, day-by-day, -day, uh, you know, approach to you know, building great habits that can be sustainable no matter where you're playing, when you're playing, 
who you're playing, um, having a patience and a perspective about a season, understanding that um, you know nothing's won in November, uh, nothing's won in January, nothing's won in March, but you can lose a lot in those months by skipping steps, by not being committed to principles and giving them um, your full attention because you're looking ahead. And that's one of the things I think we've done well. Um, we haven't dwelled on things in the past. Uh, we haven't tried to look too far ahead. We've really been intentional about staying focused on the things that we can control. And that served us well when we were starting out. It served us well uh, as we've, uh, I think, evolved and matured as an organization and as a team. And I think it's going to continue to be important for us going forward. Um, you know, uh, I think our guys and um, our organization as a whole, uh, going forward, one of the steps uh, we need to continue to take is, you know, um, commitment to the things that separate, you know, the good teams from the great teams. Um, I think we've got there a little bit more each year. Um, but, you know, a lot of games in the NBA are lost and not won. And understanding, you know, the things that uh, separate those teams, the you know, the attention to detail, uh, the, the, the quest for continuous improvement versus just, you know, uh, you know, piling up a win, but really being focused on how those wins are coming. Uh, are those sustainable habits? Are those things that are going to endure during different circumstances? Being more efficient um, and making sure that, uh, you know, we're defining ourselves by a standard of play. Uh, I think that's what the great teams do. I also think that, you know, we want to be playing our best basketball uh, mentally, uh, physically, emotionally as the season, you know, goes forward. And the teams that understand that and I think adopt that and I think, um, you know, ultimately, you know, are the last team standing or the ones that have the mental independence to stick with those things no matter what kind of outcomes they're getting. So um, a lot of the same things um, that we've talked about in the past, I think they still apply. I do think that the energy and the enthusiasm uh, and the momentum of the organization is uh, it's exciting to be around. I'm really excited for the season. I'm excited for our players. And I'm really excited for this group that we've got together. I really am. I think it's a, uh, it's a good group of people. Um, it's, a, it's a good group of competitors. Um, and it's a good group of players. And I'm interested to see how, you know, how we evolve, you know, from day one of camp until the end of the regular season. And, you know, if we can bring the best out of each other and the best out of our team, I'll, I'll be really, really proud about that. Is, is Kevin fully cleared for camp? Yes, Kevin is um, uh, cleared to participate. Uh, he's been um, playing, you know, uh, uh, without restriction, um, five on five and uh, competing as normal. Uh, with that said, you know, with, with any of our players that are coming off injuries, you know, we're going to be watching and managing, you know, practice, recovery time. That's just standard. But um, in terms of, like, limitations, he does not have any. Uh, feels great. Uh, looks great. Um, it's great to have him back on the floor. I'm happy for him uh, because he's uh, been so committed and so disciplined to that process, getting back on the floor. But, you know, that's where we are is, as an NBA uh, business and entity. You know, it's an 82-game season. It's a lot of travel. We're going to have to watch, you know, rest and recovery. So please know that, you know, if he doesn't play in all the preseason games or some of these guys don't play in all the preseason games, just remember they didn't do that in the past either. Is there, is there a plan at all that you talked about, you know, sitting in back-to-back practice, sitting back-to-back -back games at all? I, I don't think that uh, – I don't think everyone's going to go through the if – we, if we have two-a-days – go through both sessions, but that would have been the case in the past as well. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be something that evolves. We have to see how he feels during um, uh, the beginning of camp, and then we'll map out a plan for the year like we, ha we do for all of our players, not just for, not just for Kevin. But um, a lot of that is <clears throat> conversation and collaboration with a lot of different people. Um, uh, but, you know, heading into it, he, he looks great and feels great. Sam, you've known Kevin for so long. How, how have you seen this experience in the last eight months, nine months for him impact him? Um, well, I think, I, I think it's a great question, Jenny, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, a lot of these guys I've known since they're like 19, you know, in his case, I think maybe 18. Um, but, 
one of the great things about having an organization that's been together and has the continuity that we've been fortunate enough to achieve is you get to see evolution of people. You get to see them in their most difficult of circumstances. You get to see them in the best of times. You get to see how they deal with different situations. You get to see, see, have them experience life achievements personally, uh, like weddings and things of that nature. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, it's, it's one of the things I like most about my job, quite frankly. To answer your question, uh, Kevin, um, I, think, I think what we've learned is he's an incredibly optimistic person. I think his approach um, and his optimism is also uh, grounded in, in a lot of gratitude. As going through this, I think he's uh, demonstrated um, a gratitude for just being able to play in the NBA. Um, I think he also has demonstrated that, um, you know, he's going to follow the course and he's going to deal with the circumstances as they are, but he's going to be very, very forward thinking about, you know, the things he can control. And I do think that, again, philosophically, as an organization, we've adopted that since 2008. Um, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, you know, what happens to you. It's what you do when that happens to you and how you respond, how you react, how you adjust, and how you adapt. And I think we've seen a lot of our guys really develop in a lot of ways, both competitors, players, and people, through the – walks of life that happen when you play in one place and uh, you're together every day for, <laughs> for eight years. Um, I'm really proud of him, and, he, and I think he's going to have a great season because he hasn't skipped any steps here. Do you monitor him any different now since he's gone through all this over the last year in terms of just making sure he can step foot and okay, just back like it was before? Well, I mean, we're going to treat him like a normal player because that's what he is. At the same time, um, you know, all of our players um, – you know, when you play in the NBA, once, you know, training camp starts, everybody's dealing with something, quite frankly, you know. And so uh, we monitor all of our players. Uh, we watch and uh, have great collaborative conversations uh, with a lot of different people in the, um, in the organization. Uh, you know, everybody contributes to a player's development, and that can be from your nutrition, your performance, your medical, your sports science, um, your coaches, um, your video analysis. Everybody works together in the best interest of the guy. So we're managing him um, with the new information that we have. And fortunately for us, we're de- we, through this process, we've met some incredible people, um, uh, uh, specialists and, and, and so on, that have only helped us, you know, and I feel like we've helped them a little bit, inform how we're going to, you know, continue to make sure we put him in the best position to be successful. With that said, Sam, this time last year, do you wish Kevin had said something a little earlier? Or, I mean, is, was that a lesson learned? Or I, do you feel I, like he's, he, he spoke up at the right time? I, I look at it actually the opposite. I think if Kevin didn't have the, um, you know, relationship with um, Donnie Strack to have an open dialogue about how he's feeling and I think that's important with athletes I think most people wouldn't have mentioned um, that they felt an ache like that um, when he did Um, uh, and that's generally you know a bigger issue that you know you play through a lot of things and I think having constant communication with people within the organization about where you are and how you're feeling and then getting education on those things is important um, and we caught that, I think, on the front end and, um, you know, tried to treat it, you know, to the best uh, practices available to us. Was there anything that, at least in the way it was handled or the way, uh, I guess, the procedures went that you may have done differently at this looking back on the You know, um, you're not based on the information that you're presented with at the time, you know, and um, I think we covered that, and, you know, we do all kinds of uh, analysis and review on every injury, not just Kevin's. Um, and that's why we brought in the three top specialists in the, in the world going through this process. Um, but um, <clears throat> the most important thing is, you know, when we saw where, where it was headed, uh, we, we basically just decided to make, take the most proactive um, and conservative approach that we could and did the bone graft um, and made sure that he had ample time to recover. And I think he's really benefiting from that now. Sam, is anybody not clear to play? No, we've got, um, we've got everybody on the floor uh, participating. Um, as I said before, um, 
you know, we have to watch everybody, you know, um, that's part of just overall management uh, of uh, performance and science and medical. Um, and not everyone's going to be 100%, you know, after the first practice, but that's the NBA. Um, but, you know, on the floor right now, everyone's, everyone's ready to go and we're excited about it. And as things come up, you know, we'll try to deal with them, but we're always going to try to put the players first and make sure that we're thinking in the best interest of their careers, not just today, but long term as well. And that that hasn't changed since, again, since 2008. I know you're not a doctor, but can you sort of describe that, the, the last surgery that he had, the procedure that they did? It was a pretty forward thing. I mean, we read some of the stuff over the summer, but that was off the record. What was The graft? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the graft essentially is um, the method for the 5% of people that don't respond to the initial treatment, which is um, the screw. And uh, the graft itself has, um, I, I don't want to say 100%, but I, I'm sure I think it's like 99.9% uh, success rate. And that's because, um, you know, it, it, in, it involves a much longer recovery period, uh, but it also involves grafting some bone from another part of the body to help stimulate further bone growth. Um, screw is still in place. That's still part of the recovery process. Um, there's a lot of players that have had grafts before, uh, and they've had great success. Um, now there's always risk of acute things that happen. Um, something, you know, a player might like have something fall on their foot that's unrelated. Um, but it's a very conservative, proactive approach. Um, and as, as we've learned, you know, there is a 5% of people that the initial procedure doesn't take with. Uh, unfortunately, that's where we were. And so we move on to the next thing, which has a tremendous success rate. And uh, we've been fortunate to have great people consulting with us through that. And um, he's he's benefiting from it right now. Can you get to that point where it was like, OK, that didn't work. How scary was that? I mean, yeah. Well, I think I think anytime you're dealing with medicine, I think the thing you you have to understand is that um, it's, it's more art than science. It's, it's not a perfect science. And, and what makes it much compl more complicated is that um, uh, everybody's body is different. Everybody recovers differently. Everybody's designed differently. Everybody has different uh, functional movement patterns. Everybody has weight distributions uh, scientifically differently when they move, when they jump. Uh, it's really a complicated process, as I've learned. Um, and <clears throat> I think the best thing you can do in those cases is, number one, um, you have to drain the emotion out of those situations. You have to be as pragmatic as possible, ask good questions, make sure you're you know, getting the best information available, and, um, and proceed with the best interests of the player in mind long term. Um, it's important to us <clears throat> you know, that um, you know, we're helping our guys maximize uh, themselves on and off the floor. And, um, you know, we've worked collaborati collaboratively with a lot of people to make sure that we're trying to um, give our guys the best care possible. Do you expect the minutes to change this year? Um, you know, I think that's going to be something that Billy and, and Kevin and, um, you know, our medical team and performance team will work on. Um, again, I think uh, average minutes, I don't know. I, I think that's, that's probably the most important thing. I think there are going to be games where he plays – more than you know an average that he averaged last year probably but i think you have to also factor in it's 82 games and you know where you want to be at a certain point and where the schedule is and um you know where opportunities might be to to, to take some time but he's going to play a lot of minutes because he can um but we're going to be really diligent about how those minutes are distributed and when Sam, uh, Russell Westbrook, what do you think is the next step in his evolution, and how would you describe his offseason other than getting married? Um, well, I mean, he's had a busy offseason. Um, next step in his evolution, you know, I think one of the things with Russell is he's got tremendous – uh, ferocity, resiliency, um, work, that work ethic, discipline. Um, I think, you know, continuing to, uh, you, know, you know, raise the play of those around him. I think that's what the greatest of the great do. I think that's what separates the great players, you know, is not only, you know, their uh, dominance, but also, you know, uh, you know, how he continues to raise the play of those around him. Now, he does that at a pretty high clip. Um, and I think one of the things that Russell is, uh, is facing is that he does, 
he, he's, he's reaching a level where it's hard to make strides, it's hard to make gains. So you have to be looking for the small and the incremental. And that's, I think, again, a part of the aspect of where our team is. It's the, the things that, you know, I think we can try to strive to become good at are not necessarily the things that are easily measured or easily seen. It's the subtleties of the, you know, as I said, more games are, are lost than won. It's the tipping point, you know, decisions. It's the, um, you know, the small loose balls uh, that, it's the screens, it's the precision of a pass, you know, in time on, you know, on time and on target that separate the good teams from the great teams. And that's what we're all searching for. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't just say that it's Russell. I think the team as a whole, to be at our best, number one, I think we, as Billy would say, we have to be connected physically, emotionally, and mentally through an 82-game season, which is not easy because there's all kinds of interference and distraction naturally, you know, in over 82 games. And you're going to have adversities, and you're going to play bad some nights and win games. And you're going to play bad, oh, good some night, and you're going to lose a game. But if you're defining yourself by these random outcomes only, I think it can set you off the wrong path. And really having a clear idea of how we want to play um, and the efficiencies of how we want to play, I think that's important. And I think it's important to Billy. And I think it's important to Russell, too, because he's, he, he wants to continually get better. Um, and he's, his resilience and his persistence is a huge, huge accelerator for this organization. And, um, you know, we also, <clears throat> you know, we also appreciate <clears throat> him as a person. And, and those are qualities, you know, persistence and resiliency are not just qualities of players. Those are, necess those are really more qualities of a human being. He's a great player, but he has high achieving qualities as a person as well. Sam, you've built a, a franchise here that you talk about process, he's bought in the process. You also have built a, a group of players that are coming into this sweet spot in their careers right about now. How much do you feel like this season is a referendum on that, those ideals, what you've really worked to build? Well, I think that, you know, I think that would probably be hypocritical. If we were to look at it that way, I think it's hypocritical to that philosophy as a whole. I think um, we've had um, as a as a group, as an organization, a lot of success uh, over you know, uh, I would say you know a real a five or six year period of time, the second highest winning percentage in the NBA during that five year period of time, second only to the Spurs, um, and that's primarily because we've kept our focus on the things that we can control because we haven't looked at or dwelled on things in the past and we haven't concerned ourselves with things in the future. Um, I think we've been really intentional about <clears throat> the detail of the work every day. Um, I'd be disappointed if we were uh, scrapping something that has really helped define the franchise and helped define uh, our organization, which is, you know, we're, we're going to deal with the season as it comes to us. And I think the fact that we've done it that way has allowed us to learn along the way. If we have spent all our time thinking about what happened last year or what's going to happen next year, I think that drains our attention and our capacity to focus on being the best we can be this year. Um, and I think that uh, Kevin, Russell, Serge, Nick, and I think one day Adams um, have helped us you know, build, enhance, and sustain that philosophy. They're a huge part of it. If those guys um, were different people, I think we'd be a different organization, but we've been gifted with some incredible people, competitors, but you have to keep in mind, Jenny, these guys are still growing. They're just entering the primes of their career, and that's why we have um, maximized the pre-primes of their career by having a chance to win at the highest level, I think, each year that they've been here um, outside of the first year. And now, you know, we're positioned to try to maximize this, this middle part of their career where I feel like physically, emotionally, mentally, they're at a point where they can be at their best. And we want to make sure that we have a team and organization that is uh, moving forward with them to adjust to those things. Um, so internally, nothing really changes for us. Um, we understand the environment around us might, altered, might be altered slightly, but it's been altered slightly every year. 
whether it's expectations, whether it's, you know, this, you know, noise over here, but we're, we're focused on the signal and not the noise. And that I think has really helped us uh, get to the place where we are. So to that list of uh, players that you just mentioned and the new head coach, mm -hmm. how do you view his approach to wiping this lake clean with most people on your roster versus what your organization already knew or scouted or right. know about the players' performances. Where, where's that balance? Well, I think Billy is going to take some time, <clears throat> you know, to learn the players as players. He's done an, uh, a really incredible job of getting to know them as people. I mean, that was primarily his summer um, was um, spending time not only with the guys I named, <laughs> but with everyone on the roster. Um, and understanding them uh, and, you know, what motivates them. Uh, because it, I think Billy really believes in the power of 15, the power of 15 people, the connectedness of 15 people um, being aligned with, you know, what's, what, what has to be done in order for the group to be at their best. And he values um, those relationships uh, very highly. And I've, I've learned a lot from him just watching his approach, which has been great. Um, in terms of like who plays and who doesn't, those are things that he's got to determine and decide. I think um, he he's gone back and watched every game of the last two years, and I think he understands uh, and charted a million different things. Um, and I think um, you know one thing that obviously is is stands out is you know when we're at a high level defensively, we're we're really good. I mean that's that's a competitive difference for us. Um, um, we've been, uh, you know, our best teams uh, have been the last two seasons, or excuse me, take last season out, but the two seasons prior, and we've been pretty strong defensively, and a lot of our offense has come from our defense. Um, and um, so I think that'll, that'll still be an important piece, um, but he has to figure out how it all fits together, and we feel good about the depth and versatility of the team. I think figuring out how those pieces complement each other over 48 minutes and over an 82-game season, that's the challenge for a head coach, and um, he's got a great group of people around him that he's going to work through that uh, with. Um, but the other thing I think I like or I, I liked about Billy is he really embraces our players at, you know, as they are and is looking to see how he can help them evolve, um, you know, from, from, from where they are currently. And I think I've, I've seen some of that already, quite frankly. Yeah, in general, what excites you about the personnel on this team as you look at possibilities? Well, I think, <clears throat> I think we can play a lot of different ways. You know, I think, um, I think, you know, much has been talked about, you know, the game is changing. And it, I think what, the only thing about the game that never changes is that it always changes. <laughs> and whatever's happening now um, is, you know, whatever's happening now is going to change because some creative person and some creative coach is going to figure out how to thwart what's happening. And whatever's in fashion is generally what's worked. And when you think about the shreds of difference and different things that have taken place that have allowed the things that are currently in fashion to take place, it's pretty much a, a coin flip. So um, I think you have to be prepared to play a lot of different ways. And uh, I think we can do that. Uh, I think the, um, the, di the diversity of our bigs, uh, we haven't really had that. You know, um, I think that you know, Cantor gives us something that we haven't really had, but we can also put pieces around Cantor that he hasn't really had. And um, we also have, uh, you know, uh, I think DJ Augustine and Cameron Payne, you know, give us real uh, cerebral players at that position. Um, Kyle Singler uh, is a guy that uh, fundamentally is really excellent at that size and is a role acceptance winning winning player contributor um so i think th i think we've gotten um i think we've gotten deeper i mean m reflecting back on the last two seasons you know we've been able to add moro singler Cantor, Payne, augustine and mcgarry and you know all those guys are either in their prime or pre-prime um and we've, we've been able to add those guys really um, without cap space.
we've been able to do that. You know, our free agent acquisition was Anthony Morrow, and the rest have been added different ways. So um, we feel like we're evolving as a team um, without changing who we are. You talked about staying the course and things not changing, but some things have changed. You have a new coach. Uh, you've got a great talent level. You've got, obviously got Kevin's free agency after this. With those things in mind, is there additional pressure on you to see things go a certain way this season? Well, I think to start with, um, I think philosophically, things aren't really, you know, things don't change. I think, um, I think there's a difference between a message and a philosophy, you know, and I think we've demonstrated philosophy here because it's been executed over an, uh, going on an eight-year period of time, and that's hard to achieve in the NBA um, or in any, really in any business because of so much um, unforeseen and, un, you know, unpredictable circumstances. Um, but we try to act on that on a daily basis. Uh, so change in philosophy, I think, doesn't happen quickly. I think it has to happen um, for good reason, and I think we've adopted that. But within that, you're always building. And I think that – I don't think we change who we are, but I think we're constantly building upon who we are. And I think each evolution that the team has gone through uh, and the different people, um, players – coaches, everybody, you know, have done excellent work here. And now it's our turn to try to build upon that because I do think that in order to sustain and try to create these new, you know, levels for a team or a business or an organization, like you have to stimulate the, the progress of the team. Uh, to your second question, um, with respect to me, um, I, you know, I just don't approach my job thinking about myself ever because I think as soon as it becomes about any one individual, whether it's me or any other person in the building, I think we're starting to do a disservice to the organization. The organization is the most important thing. Preserving the values and the ideals of the Thunder comes first above everything. Um, and I believe that has allowed us to um, deal with some difficult situations. I think um, setbacks. Um, uncertainties, but at the same time, it's also allowed us to celebrate some great successes and enjoy those things. And that's one of the things that I think is really important in, um, in what we do is if you spend all your time thinking about what could happen or what did happen, you're going to miss what's happening. And we should be really, really excited about the fact that we have, have, we have a great group of guys that are, um, have been together, have enjoyed great success together, have gone through tough times together. We've got a group of younger guys coming, in the, coming through the pipeline of the program that are being mentored by um, you know, our flag-carrying you know, members. I think the challenge is extending our culture um, through change and through, um, you know, through different personnel. That's happened. I mean... I went to Seattle this summer to visit Nick Collison, and Stephen Adams was there working out with him. Now, Nick is 34 years old, 35 maybe. Um, Stephen is like 23. They're not watching the same movies, okay? But Collison is, <laughs> Collison is taking an intentional and active role in helping when I say build the organization he's helping that guy I think he's really invested in in, in Stephen and his success and I think those are the types of acts and actions that have helped us along the way because the thunder has come first and I think the benefit of so many different people coming through the organization uh, I can go down the line everyone's left a mark Muhammad Fisher Karan Butler, when he was here for a short period of time, Cephalosha, Harden, Green. We, we've had some great guys come through the organization. Everyone's played a part in it. Um, and we want to create an environment where those guys feel like their contributions matter and uh, where they learn to be great pros going forward. Sam, you, Sam you've not acknowledged the uh, distractions that will come this year with Kevin. I haven't asked about those. Have you, have you guys had any open dialogue about the season's going to be like. Uh, with you mean with, with him specifically? With, uh, with the free agent talk that's going to come this season with him. 
What you mean? Spe- I'm just sorry. Just specifically with him, though. With Kevin. Oh no, I think I think here's the thing. I think again, um, we're not going to bury our head in the sand and pretend that that's not going to be in the air. But I think again, we'd be pretty inconsistent. Uh, we've adopted approach in 2008. It served us well because I think it's kept our focus on the things that we can control. Um, I think if we divert from that now, I don't think we're being incredibly authentic because the number one goal is to have a great season, not just him, but the organization as a whole. And if we take our eye off the ball, I think we deplete our attention. Now, with that being said, um, I, we talk a lot about you know, the organization, our values, um, what makes a Thunder player, um, you know, things that are important for us going forward because we're trying to relentlessly build a great organization. We're trying to populate it with good people, high character, skilled people at every facet and every level of the program on and off the floor. And we're trying to build an identity and a tradition for the Thunder that's going to stand the test of time. That takes all of our attention. If we take our eye off the ball and start dwelling on yesterday or tomorrow, I don't think we're serving the organization to its full capacity. And that, those are the conversations that I think we are best to have with them. Knowing that the future is coming, we're incredibly excited about that because it's an opportunity for us to you know, keep him you know, in Oklahoma City, a Hall of Fame player, legacy player, I should say legacy person in Oklahoma. Um, but those are conversations for another day. He knows how we feel about him. The best way to serve the Thunder and put him in a position to be successful, those things are one and the same. And that's what we, that's what we focus on. Sam, with Billy being a rookie coach, do you envision him leaning more heavily on Monty and Mo, or will there not be a really a, a role change in that regard? You know, it's a, that's a great question, John. Um, I wouldn't say it's because he's a rookie coach. Because the guy's coached 700 games before he's, he's 50 years old. And that's like a statistical anomaly. Um, but he is a rookie NBA coach. However, Billy Donovan is a curious, learning oriented individual. And he's going to ask questions and rely on people because he's confident in himself. He's going to solicit ideas. He's going to ask for feedback. These are the reasons why we think he has the, the qualities of a high-achieving person, not just a high-achieving coach. And he would be, um, I think, um, unwise not to listen to Monty and ask Mo and spend time with Mark Bryan and Darko, guys that have been in the system and in the organization uh, and, and are, I know the roots of the, of the program. Obviously, Mo has come back, but um, he's going to look for different ideas. He's going to listen. He's going to try to implement. Now, at the end of the day, he has to make the final decision, and I know that he is supremely confident in doing that, but he will for sure be listening to those guys, amongst other people in the organization, because what we've tried to do is build an infrastructure of people, highly skilled people in their different areas that allow the coaches to just focus on what they have to do every day. So uh, we've got great travel people, we've got great medical people, great performance people. We try to strip it down so that Billy can focus on coaching the team, uh, developing the players and building relationships and leading us. Were they his hires or your hires? Uh, 100% Billy. Um, And another thing I would say about him is Billy, and, and the great quality about him is he did not know Monty Williams and he did not know Morris Cheeks. Um, they were on a list of people, um, and he, he interviewed those guys, um, and he really liked them, and he felt that they could help. I think, number one, one of the qualities that we really liked about Billy was that um, he was a, totally aligned with our vision for an organization, you know, not just our vision for a team, but a, our vision for an organization. And... Um, one of the things that makes him able to do that is I think he can, he's naturally intrinsically gravitates to the type of people that we think thrive here. And he's being one of them. Um, and 
I think he felt like both of those guys could not only help him, but could help our players and would do good work here and be appreciative of the opportunity. And those guys have been great together. But, um, you know, I didn't talk to Maurice through that process. Uh, and the only thing I did with Monty was um, call to see if he'd be interested in talking to Billy. But uh, those guys hit it off. And I'm, I'm really, I think we should be really grateful that those guys, you know, have, have jumped in because, again, I think both those guys have accomplished a lot. They're selfless people. And they, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're not worried about who's sitting where on the bench. They're worried about the thunder. And those are the things that I think make great environments. And earlier on, you mentioned your depth at the center position and then the guard position as well. Just curious about two guys, Dakari Johnson and um, Samaja Christian, just where they stand. Um, okay, so Dakari will play with the blue team this year. Um, he's had a great summer. Um, he, uh, I think the things for him right now, we've got to work on his, uh, you know, just his body, his physical, the foundation for his game. Um, and he's made some strides. Uh, one thing about him that really attracted us in the draft was this is a 19 year old player. You know, he's, he's young and, um, he's, he's relatively accomplished. Um, he does a good job on both boards, um, he has a good sense of the floor and where to be. We're excited about working with him. And Mark Dagnall has done an excellent job with that team. He really has. Um, Samaje uh, is playing overseas in Italy. He's playing for Pesaro. Um, I think at this time next year, I think Samaje Christian's an NBA player. I think he needs a few things uh, to be seasoned. Uh, and I think going to uh, Italy uh, is a great sign that he's uh, really invested in his own development and really taking the steps necessary. Uh, whether he's, I, now, you know, whether there's a spot with us in the NBA or he'll be playing, some, we have to get that young man to the NBA. He's an NBA player. He's done great work. He's got to do some things and clean up some things there. But I'm confident he'll do that. Um, and he's, he's come a long way. I'm, I'm really happy for him. He's, he's a skilled player um, that's learning the position even more. Dion's facing an interesting contract here this season. I guess he's on his fifth head coach in four years, mm -hmm. an unknown role. Just what's his future here? Have you talked about it with him, what he's facing? Well, like everybody that enters this period of their, their contracts, um, the, the, the October 31 extension deadline we're gonna have conversations like we always do I think you know, we need to you know explore that um, uh, w those things generally don't start to happen until you know camp begins etc those deals have been um, across the league harder and harder to do over time I don't know that if that changes this year or not because of the dynamics in the uh, marketplace but um, I think Dion um, for us represents uh, a great opportunity. And I think uh, for him, I think it represents a great opportunity. I think uh, this is a guy that at 23 years old has some tools that are not easily found. And that's one of the reasons that we, we went to acquire him. Um, at the same time, uh, he's got work to do. And I, he'll be the first to tell you that. Um, but some slight adjustments with this, this guy's game um, could lead to some pretty significant impact. And I think he has the tools to be an impact player. Um, you know, that's going to take a lot of work on both parties' part. Um, but there's not a lot of guys that, um, you know, can get to the rim and get in the paint. Um, he has uh, excellent – he's actually, last year, we you track our, our, our corner passes, um, he hits the corners exceptionally well, not only with regularity but with accuracy. Um, and part of the reason why is because he can get in the lane. Um, but, like with any young player, uh, efficiency and um, uh, some, some minor tweaks can really change his game. But the tool set is, is impressive, and uh, we think he uh, has a chance to be an impact player down the line. Is that one of the kind of adjustments? You know, I mean, I'm not going to get into the specifics because uh, I don't think I would do that with any other player. But the thing I would stress is he's got a great skill set, and some of the skill set is rare. Um, but there are other things that have to be improved, and I th he's shown a willingness to try to do that. And I think if he does that, he becomes a pretty important player.
Ennis Cantor always about to talk about his defense. What kind of summer did he have? Yeah, um, he's he's here now. Uh, he's worked out with us, um, you know, off and on in Oklahoma City. Um, he's had, I think, he's had a productive summer. Um, you know, I, I understand the 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 um, the concern on the defensive piece, and I, I get that. Um, I think for us, the thing that you know he adds to our team is versatility, depth. Uh, and we look at the team as a whole, and I think we don't look at the team in a vacuum because you get to certain points with your organization and your team, and you know, to us, the opportunity to add a player like Cantor as a team that's above the cap is extremely rare. Um, at 23 years old and four years of experience, uh, has shown a, a, a high level of productivity, um, and we have players that I think complement the areas in which he needs to improve. So uh, if we look at everybody in a vacuum, um, I, no, but no one looks real good because there's no perfect players. Uh, but there's an intention to improve. There's, I think, uh, hopefully some benefits of, a, of the system um, and the uh, overall approach of the team. Uh, but he's going to have to do a lot of work, there's no question. Um, but I really like how he fits with our, with our group of players because we haven't had someone that you can throw the ball to when other teams go small. And again, we're, you know, we hope, I think we're fortunate to not have to rely on any one player, but we have to figure out how the team, how it fits together and best executes over 48 minutes. You mentioned everyone's healthy going into camp. Serge didn't play in that after your game, and there's some, maybe some concern that that knee injury lingered. Where is he at? Is there concern? Yeah, well, you know, um, different points during the summer. Um, you know, he's had some discomfort. He saw his surgeon. He's had regular checkups with his surgeon. Surgeon has continued to, um, you know, feel very confident and encourage him to continue to, uh, to move and play. And he's fully cleared. Um, uh, I don't think that was necessarily as well the Africa thing. It's just a real conservative approach with all of our players to make sure that they're in the best position going forward. Um, but that's part of rehab. You're going to have some ups and downs. Where he is right now, he feels really good. He looks great. Um, but like with every player, like we have to watch every single one of our guys to make sure that we're in front of anything. We'll do that with him, just like we'll do it uh, with Kevin and anybody else. But I think Serge may have had the best summer of any of our players, um, just in terms of just improvement in overall game. Um, he's shooting the ball well. His passing um, has has really improved. And I think that's one of the things with Billy is, um, he wants the players to try things that, um, you know, they can't do yet, but with the belief that he can help put them in positions where they can do some of those things. And, you know, player development isn't about simply younger players. Player development is about developing within a system of play and can you execute different things for the coach that will allow the overall team to be more efficient. So a lot of times think, People think player development is individual skill base. Well, it's for Billy, I think, because he's looking to um, you know, build a system that has continuity, creates efficiency, obviously uh, incorporating the fact that we happen to have some really uh, talented pieces and players, but you know, figuring out where and when those players need to be at their best and where their best opportunities come. Uh, he's building players I think, with the idea of expanding the system. That takes some time um, and some perspective and some patience. And as I said before, I mean, we want to be at a point where um, that implementation really is anchored and embedded so it can be relied upon under difficult circumstances um, and not just, um, you know, not just, you know, when in a favorable, you know, when the sun's out in the, on a day like today. <laughs> what have you seen a couple more, guys? Camera? Um, you know, it's funny for <laughs> I was saying to uh, Troy the other day, um, you know, for a team that drafted, you know, a player in the lottery, um, it's as if we never drafted anybody. <laughs> um, no one really talks about him. Um, uh, no one really asks about him in the media. Um, and the thing I love about Cameron is that I think he'd prefer it that way. 
and that's one of the reasons we drafted him. Um, I think he um, has a great sense of the game. I think he's got a real learning mentality. He asks a lot of question. he's a, questions. He's a really good listener. Got a great spirit to him. Um, he's got a lot to learn, but you know he's got Russell and DJ Augustine working with him on a regular basis. Maurice Cheeks, Royal Ivy. Uh, he's got good people with him. Um, but the thing I like about him is um, it's really about basketball for him. I think he really loves basketball. I think he, um, I think it's a priority. I think he, um, I think he likes the work itself. I think he enjoys the idea of, you know, improvement. Um, and I really think he enjoys, um, you know, incorporating his teammates in the game. Because that's, I think, what makes him, makes him a different player. But, um, you know, like any player, he's, 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 got, he's got work to do. But we're happy we have him. And um, I think the guys uh, that he's, he's working against every day are only going to make him better. I think it's too early to tell. You know, I, I would hate, the only person I could tell you will be spending time with the Blue will be Dakari. He'll play for them. The rest of the guys, again, like we have to see how everybody looks uh, in camp. I, I, it's kind of, as I said, exciting. It's exciting to see our players in this group, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a new system you know, and how they're affected and, um, you know, how that changes and, and, and what limitations are, um, uh, you know, accounted for and, and what new limitations we might find. Um, so that's an important part of this process for Billy and the players as they go through this. Um, but I'm excited to see how everybody uh, assimilates and incorporates and um, how we come together as a team. Because as I said, you know, I'll, I'll be disappointed if, our the competitive you know maturity of understanding um, the the little things that add up you know if we're not really embracing and good at those um, by the end of the season because I think that's where good teams go f to great teams I think that's where you build um, incredible resilience and I think that's how you make it through this really really long arduous you know march of a season. Um, and I think I think I think that will be a great test for us, and I think we'll do great with that. All right. Thank you, Sam.